My name is Leah, and this is Junker Necker DIY, where I bring you budget decor videos every week. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today's video is part of the Unusual Pumpkins DIY Challenge. It's hosted by Happiness Created and Crafting in Mimi's World, and there'll be a playlist. Now, here goes the first DIY. I'm using a Dollar Tree pumpkin, one of those lightweight foam things, and I was trying to figure out which side I wanted to go with. I went with the thicker wedges, and I'm going to be cutting out the shape of a jack-o'-lantern. I first started with my small rotary cutter, but it just wasn't doing right, so I went to the X-Acto knife. Now, I'm not taking all the foam away. I'm just cutting a layer off, getting all the orange off, leaving a layer of styrofoam attached. I do this for the two eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And it looks something like this. And with this project, if it looks wonky, it doesn't matter because it's going to be wonkier in just a minute. Because I'm going to put spray paint on it and it's going to melt. And it's going to look like a rotten putrid pumpkin. See how that's reacting to the spray paint? And I should have dabbed that off of the face a little sooner. I kind of went overboard with the face. But it turns out great anyway. It's just something to remember next time. Also went around in some other spots, not just the face, and let them react a while. And then I dabbed the paint off. Of course, you can't get it all off, but I'll show you here. There's a place on the side. It's all bubbly. Once it gets to a point that you like, go ahead and wipe it or dab it off. That's just a dingy towel that I was using. And dab, dab, dab. Now I'm bringing it in and adding some color. I've got holly branch, uh, something sunset, and brown nutmeg. Hold on, let me check those colors. Okay, the color that I'm using right now is the Nutmeg Brown, and I'm going to try to cover some of that white styrofoam that's showing. Not all of it, because a few specks here and there kind of looks like mold, in my opinion. And I'm just dabbing it around, here and there. Now I'm going to go with some Holly Branch. And these are all apple barrel acrylic paints. And I'm going to go around and dab some, bring it down. I'm just going to be layering on color after color after color pretty much until I get it the way I like it. Now, this is all up to you what colors you think looks more like a rotted pumpkin and you do it your own way. Now, the color I'm using here is Golden Sunset. And I'm just trying to bring those eyes back out because it looked like it was just all blending into one big orifice. Is that the right word? Orifice? Oh, whatever. Anyway, I just highlighted the edges of the eyes, nose, and mouth with the golden sunset. Now I'm using more of the Nutmeg Brown, and like I said, I'm going to be layering. I'm putting some here and there. Not really trying to get a heavy coat. I'm not trying to cover all the orange completely. Just dabbing it, smearing it, layering it. It's looking like that. And I'm going to take some Spanish moss and reindeer moss to add to the moldy look. I just took a little pinch of the reindeer moss 
and tried to take a little pinch of the Spanish moss, but it was all rolled up together. And I had planned to leave that um, stem and just put moss around it, but I do decide later on to take that out and put something different in. I'm just putting down hot glue, sticking down the mosses, just wherever I think it would look best. And there I'm putting in a different stem, which is just two of the tumbling tower blocks glued together and stuffed in. And picking up little pieces off the table and sticking them down. Like so. Don't want to waste any, if at all possible. And now here is how that pumpkin turned out. Not bad for a first time trying this. You ever get something in your head and you imagine what it would be like and then it doesn't quite turn out like you wanted? This was one of those projects for me. I like it, but I don't love it. Anyway, I wanted to tell you to please, if you're not familiar with these ladies, go check out their channels. They are great hosts. I like to call them both my friends and check out the playlist. All of those links will be in the description box. Now on to DIY number two. Using a Dollar Tree foam pumpkin again, I'm gonna go for the side with the most ridges. And I'm gonna trace out a design that I want with just the end of a paintbrush. It's just making an indention where I want to cut. And this time I'm going to cut all the way through and take the pieces out. Why do they look like, these Dollar Tree pumpkins look like two different kinds of pumpkins stuck together. That's so weird. My OCD makes me want to cut them apart and put them together with their supposed to be's. Anyway, back to what I'm doing here. Using my X-Acto knife to cut it out using the handle of that paintbrush again to kind of smooth over some of those edges that are ratty. And now I'm going to take this piercing tool from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go around and make some holes around the eyes and around the mouth. I didn't put a nose on this one. Now I got out this wired jute twine. I thought, you know, hey, this would be great to make stitches with. I can just cut little short pieces and make X's, stick them into the holes. Oh no, that was not happening because that stinking twine kept raveling off the wire. So, I had to make adjustments. Here I'm just cutting the top out so I can get my hand in there. But it was so small, that didn't quite work out. Yeah, I didn't have fun with this one. I do like how it turned out in the end, but it was not fun. I ended up just doing the best I could with stitching over the eyes and the mouth. And it came out looking like, well, I'm not finished yet. Never mind. You don't get to see what it looks like yet. Um, yeah, here I'm showing you that I took that punch tool and just kind of stuck the ends of the twine in. Now I'm taking some folk art antique wax and I'm going to go around it, just kind of dirty it up. I'm putting paint in all those grooves to begin with because I kind of want that to soak up into the pumpkin so it's got good detail. all the way around 
and then once I get that on I'm gonna start smearing and kind of do like a dry brushing go over that seam to get some on my brush and then go around and it looks something like so I like it looks like something from Hellraiser does it not anyway pop that top back in didn't have to glue it or anything put some of the antique wax on top of that as well and now I'm putting a stem on I wanted to use the wire jute for something so I just kind of made a um, kind of a stem with little tendrils sticking out I was out of frame so I just took out the process there but yeah it turned out really creepy I like it I would really love to do this with a larger pumpkin so I could get my hand in and really stitch it instead of just poking the ends into holes anyway it's just sitting on top of a can it's not glued to that now for DIY number three boy this one just I emptied out every carton every box of my craft supplies looking for stuff to put on this pumpkin it was one of those things where it just kind of came together one piece at a time I'm going over it with white paint and not trying to get full coverage I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in white of course and while the paint's drying, I'm going to ready these skeleton hands, also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to twist some wire around the middle finger and snip off one end or one wire sticking out. That just leaves me with one wire to stick into the pumpkin. And I did both hands like that. And I'm not going to rely on just the wire to hold the hands on the pumpkin. I just need those to steady the hands while I glue them. But that's all coming up later. Here I drug out some pieces that I broke off of the Dollar Tree garden fencing. And at one point I thought I might make them vampire fingernails for my coffee bar. But I decided to use them here. And I am sawing off the bottom of the pumpkin. Why? You'll find out. It's just something that hit me and I thought I'd try it. And it looks something like that. Just a little bit of the pumpkin off the bottom. Now I'm going to clean up my work surface a bit. Get that styrofoam off my desk and rake it all into that imaginary trash can that's right beside me now what am I doing oh black paint yes I'm gonna paint the face on this one eyes nose and mouth and I want it to look like it's really mad an evil pumpkin Oh, he's so mad. I just did a little triangle nose. Nothing fancy. And his mouth has actually been cut off. I imagine this is a kind of a tall oval pumpkin and he's cut off from the jaw down. I'm using these berry picks from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use a couple of those without the leaf. I do use the leaf, but that's later on. Take the leaves off. And then I'm going to stick them on the bottom side of the pumpkin. We'll use a little hot glue and then poke those through the styrofoam. I want this to look like he's pulled his own head off and his guts are hanging out. Yes, I know a pumpkin would likely have pumpkin seed as its guts, but I don't have any, so just work with me here. 
That looks sort of, sort of like entrails hanging out. Now for the teeth. I'm using those little pieces. I cut some down so I'd have different lengths. And I just want it to have a crazy, creepy grin with what mouth it has left. For the stem, I just took a scrap piece of nautical rope and glued it to itself. Kind of fold it over like that. And I'm going to glue it right on top, right beside those leaves that I stuck down in the top of the pumpkin using the wire that's attached. Now I'm going to stick that wire in the side, one on each side for those skeleton hands. And like I said before, that wire is just to keep them steady until I can glue them down. And I'm going to add hot glue to two fingers of the skeleton hands and put them flat on the pumpkin. What I want to do here is um, make the pumpkin head up in the air with the skeleton hands propping it. And it worked out pretty well for the most part. Oh, there's where my pumpkin stem fell off. And there we go. Um, it works great if it's propped against something, but I don't want to do that. So I dug around and found a wooden dowel. And it's going to be like a third leg for the pumpkin. And I just stick it through and I actually glue the stem to that dowel and here I've touched up the paint where I kind of smeared it accidentally while it was still wet. I did some dry brushing on those fangs and now I'm going to use flag red and I want it to look like blood dripping off of those long teeth so I just put a dot of red on the ends and let it drip off and what's dripping off I'm going to get and put along the bottom uh, well the top of the teeth bottom of the pumpkin so it would look like kind of like the pumpkin's gums are bleedy maybe And that's how it turned out. My cat's checking it out. Yep, there's my pumpkin head. He's so mad that he pulled his head off. Oh, I painted the entrails a little bit red here and there, too. Now, DIY number four. This is the last one, and it's not spooky, but I did want to include it. Um, I made this little pink pumpkin with the paper doily on it recently for a DIY. And I'm going to spruce it up. I never was really happy with that. It was kind of just plain. So what I'm doing here is taking some of that white Waverly chalk paint and I want to make a skull shape. Which would be wider from the head down into the cheekbones and then narrow for the jawline. There's how it's coming together. You can see how I made a smaller jaw attached to that wider cheekbones. But it really wasn't even necessary for me to do this because, well, you'll see. I'm going to take that same white paint and paint over that orange on the bottom. It's not really going to be shown, but if it is shown at all, I don't want the orange glaring at me. Yep, just covering that up. Now, what I'm going to do is take that piece of the pumpkin from the previous DIY 
what I cut off the bottom and I'm going to put hot glue on it and stick it right on the top of this pumpkin. So it's more flat rather than concave on the top. And I did have to trim it down a little bit. Now I'm going to bring in some reindeer moss and I'm going to glue that. <laughs> There's a smile. Now I'm going to glue the reindeer moss all over the top of the pumpkin, covering up the majority of that orange. Now I'm going to start hot gluing some bright, beautiful flowers all over the top of this pumpkin. If it has a stem still attached, then I just use that. Just stick the wire through the reindeer moss and all that. And that's how that's looking so far. Pretty, pretty. Now I'm going to take this mask, Day of the Dead mask, and I'm going to hot glue it onto the pumpkin. I was meaning to get the skull big enough that it looked like a skull wearing the mask, but it didn't work out like that. You'll see here, I'm just putting some hot glue in there, sticking it down. I had to hold it for quite a while for the glue to cool down and actually adhere the mask to the pumpkin. You can see here that I didn't even get the mask in the middle of the skull that I had painted. But no matter, I can fix that with some white paint in the eye holes and it's going to be gorgeous. Now I'm going to take these Dollar Tree candlesticks that I've used previously for I don't know what, but they're already painted white. So I'm going to glue them together like so. And then I'm going to sit that pumpkin right on the top of that so the little streamers on her mask will hang down to the sides. And actually, this turns out to be my favorite. I love how it turned out, and it was just kind of an afterthought to do this. Making sure it's secured. And now, this is how it looks. I think she's adorably beautiful. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to check out the playlist because I know you'll love that oh my dog won't stop barking at the thunder Ugh. until next time bye bye